Hi everyone! This is Professor M. Das Science, and today I want to derive the mathematical form of the wave function of coherent states in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. Coherent states are defined as the eigenstates of the lowering operator of the quantum harmonic oscillator. Another important feature is that coherent states are the quantum states that most closely resemble the motion of a classical harmonic oscillator. And for this reason, they're also called quasi-classical states. The aim of this video is really straightforward. We're going to derive the mathematical form of the wave function of coherent states. And although today's focus is on the maths, we have a companion video where we explore all of the properties of the coherent state wave functions that we're going to derive today. So make sure you take a look. Let's go! Let's start with a quick refresher of the quantum harmonic oscillator. The Hamiltonian H is equal to the usual kinetic energy, plus the potential energy, which depends quadratically on the position operator. We can also write this down in terms of ladder operators, or in terms of the number operator. The eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian is given by this expression, where as usual these are the eigenvalues and these are the eigenstates. The eigenvalues en are quantized, and n is a non-negative integer. The ladder operators allow us to move between eigenstates. The lowering operator A, acting on energy eigenstate n, gives another eigenstate where there is one fewer quantum of energy, and the raising operator acting on the same energy eigenstate gives another eigenstate with one extra quantum of energy. This is it for the very quick refresher, but you can find many more details in our series on the quantum harmonic oscillator that is linked in the description. Let's now have a quick look at coherent states, which we typically label with the ket alpha. They are defined as the eigenstates of the lowering operator. As usual, these here are the eigenvalues, and these are the eigenstates. As the lowering operator is not emission, the eigenvalues are in general complex numbers. We can actually write coherent states in a variety of alternative but equivalent forms, but the one that we will use today builds on the displacement operator. The displacement operator d alpha is defined as the exponential function of this sum over ladder operators. We can then write the coherent state alpha as equal to the action of the displacement operator on the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator. And this expression is the one we will use today to construct the wave function associated with coherent states. Again, you can find many more details about all of these concepts by following the relevant links in the description. The objective of today's video is to go over the mathematical derivation that will allow us to write the wave function associated with coherent states. To do so, what we essentially need is to write quantum states in the position representation. Remember that the position basis is defined through the eigenstates of the position operator. We can then write a general quantum state psi using the usual expansion in the position representation. The expansion coefficients psi of x are given by the bracket x psi, and these expansion coefficients are what we call the wave function. In our case, we want the coherent state wave function, and we're going to call it psi alpha of x, and it is given by the bracket between x and alpha. As we anticipated a moment ago, we'll use the expression for alpha up here in terms of the displacement operator, so we can rewrite this as the bra x, the displacement operator, and the ground state kit. So the aim of today's video is to evaluate an explicit expression for this wave function. And this means that today's video is going to be rather mathematical. But don't forget to check out the companion video where we explore the various properties of the wave function of coherent states with the aim of gaining a more conceptual understanding of it. To get started with the calculation, we'll first rewrite the displacement operator in terms of the position and momentum operators. This here is the definition of the displacement operator, which depends on the ladder operators here and here. 
Remember from the video on ladder operators that the lowering operator is equal to this prefactor times the position operator plus this prefactor times the momentum operator. In a similar manner, we can construct the raising operator by simply calculating the adjoint of the expression for the lowering operator. Let's now take this exponent up here and let's copy it down. We can rewrite it in terms of the position and momentum operators by first replacing the raising operator with the corresponding expression, and then replacing the lowering operator with the corresponding expression. We can then combine the two terms with the position operator and the two terms with the momentum operator. Overall, this means that we can rewrite the displacement operator as equal to this exponential in terms of the position operator and the momentum operator. We now need to remember a result that was first introduced in the video on functions of operators. If we have two operators A and B, such that A commutes with their commutator, and B also commutes with their commutator, then we have that the exponential of A plus B is equal to the exponential of A times the exponential of B times an exponential of their commutator. In our case, the exponential involves the position and momentum operators. We have that X and P obey the canonical commutation relation, which means that the commutator is the scalar ih bar. This implies that x commutes with the commutator of x and p, and so does p. In turn, this means that the conditions under which this expression holds are fulfilled, so we can use it for our expression of the displacement operator up here. In particular, we get that the displacement operator is equal to an exponential of the position operator times an exponential of the momentum operator, times an exponential proportional to the commutator of the position term with the momentum term. And feel free to pause here to make sure that you are happy with this step. Moving on, let's first focus on this commutator. To evaluate it, we can take all of the scalars outside, multiplying the commutator of x and p. This commutator is ih bar. This product is equal to alpha squared minus alpha star squared. The masses cancel here and here, and the frequencies also cancel here and here. This means that the expression simplifies to minus i over 2h bar, multiplying alpha squared minus alpha star squared, all multiplying ih bar. The h bars cancel here and here, and the minus i here combines with the i here to give 1. We end up with 1 half times alpha squared minus alpha star squared. Using this expression, we can now rewrite the displacement operator as equal to the exponential of the position operator times the exponential of the momentum operator times the scalar exponential, where we now use the simplified expression that we got from the commutator. We're now ready to go back to our wave function. Using this expression for the displacement operator and inserting it here, we end up with the wave function of the coherent state being equal to this scalar exponential times the bra x, then the exponential of the position operator times the exponential of the momentum operator, all acting on the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator. As the position operator here is Hermitian, it can act on this bra, which is a position eigenstate, so these terms simply give the bra times a scalar exponential. Just to make sure this step is crystal clear, this x here is now a scalar, the eigenvalue of the position eigenstate here. Overall, this means that we can rewrite the wave function as equal to the original scalar exponential, multiplying the new scalar exponential that depends on the eigenvalue x, and all multiplying this bracket that now only involves the exponential of the momentum operator. 
For the next step, we need to use the translation operator. Remember from the video on translation operators that you have linked in the description that a translation by lambda is described by the unitary operator t lambda, which is equal to the exponential of minus i lambda p over h bar. The action of the translation operator on a position eigenstate is to translate it by an amount lambda. The equivalent equation in dual space becomes this. We can now see that this exponential up here is simply a translation operator where the translation is given by this prefactor times alpha plus alpha star. This means that the bra x times this exponential of the momentum operator is equal to the bra x displaced by the negative of the translation. Overall, we can write the wave function of a coherent state as equal to this scalar exponential times this other scalar exponential times this bracket between the displaced position eigenstate and the ground state. Remembering that this here is the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator, then this bracket is simply the ground state wave function of the quantum harmonic oscillator, which I label with psi zero, and it is evaluated at x minus the translation. This means that we can write the wave function of a coherent state as equal to this exponential times this other exponential times a displaced ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator. In the video on quasi-classical states that you have linked in the description, we show that the expectation value of the position operator in a coherent state is equal to this prefactor times alpha plus alpha star. And we also discuss that the expectation value of the momentum operator in a coherent state is equal to this prefactor times alpha minus alpha star. Using these results, we see straight away that this term here is simply the expectation value of the position operator. And we can also consider this exponent here, which we can conveniently rewrite like this. Feel free to stop here for a moment to convince yourself of this step. We now see that the term in brackets is equal to the expectation value of the momentum operator here. So we can rewrite this as equal to i over h bar times the expectation value of the momentum operator times x. Overall, we end up with the wave function of a coherent state as equal to this exponential times this exponential times the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator shifted by the expectation value of the position operator. In this video, we will stick with the mathematical derivation, but with this latest expression, you can already start to appreciate some of the interesting properties of coherent state wave functions. For example, the fact that it is a simple shift of the ground state. But for all the details, don't forget to check out the companion video. So how about the other terms? Let's look at the first exponent. From the general properties of complex numbers, we can write that the exponent is equal to minus i times the real part of alpha times the imaginary part of alpha. I haven't really proved this, but it is a very easy relation to prove by just using the general properties of complex numbers. So I leave it as an exercise for you. What we're going to do next is to define a new quantity theta alpha as equal to minus the real part of alpha times the imaginary part of alpha. As such, theta alpha is a real number. And with this definition, the exponent becomes i theta alpha. This leaves us with the wave function of the coherent state equal to this exponential times this exponential times the displaced ground state. And we're done. But before we finish, let's summarize. A coherent state is a state of the quantum harmonic oscillator that we typically label with the kit alpha. It is defined as an eigenstate of the lowering operator with eigenvalue alpha. 
What we found today is that we can write coherent states in the position representation via their wave function, which we label psi alpha of x. This coherent state wave function is given by the product of this first exponential times this second exponential times the displaced ground state wave function of the quantum harmonic oscillator. In this expression, the phase theta alpha is equal to minus the real part of alpha times the imaginary part of alpha. The expectation value of the momentum operator in state alpha is equal to this prefactor times alpha minus alpha star. And the expectation value of the position operator in state alpha is equal to this other prefactor times alpha plus alpha star. We will leave it here today, but we can actually learn a great deal about coherent states by investigating the properties of this wave function. And this is why I want to encourage you once again to check out the companion video where we approach this wave function from a more conceptual point of view. This type of mathematical derivation is an essential prerequisite before we can explore the properties of the coherent state wave functions. Now that we've gone through the derivation, it means that we're ready to check out the companion video where, among other things, we're going to see how these wave functions oscillate back and forth. And as always, if you liked the video, please subscribe.